here to do. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Let's enter into worship. Well, let's give our thanks to the Lord this morning. We'll come to you with a song, a fresh song this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Come on, branches. Our God is worthy. He is faithful. He is faithful. Lord, you are so good. Thank you for the breath in our lungs this morning. Thank you for such a great salvation you bring to us, Lord. Eternal life. And we just worship your mighty name this morning. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We sing these songs to you, Lord, in spirit and truth. One day we're going to fly away. Jesus is going to spit it, spit. He's going to spit all right <laughs> on all the unrighteous. <laughs> I think the sword will come out of his mouth. Yeah. He's going to roar like the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we're going to start with a slow song this morning. Just to be reverent of the Lord. <laughs> oh, we're just having fun. Let's put our hands together for our King. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. these songs first thing in the morning my hands aren't even awake yet oh. <laughs> wakey wakey wow. shaky shaky wait for you lord <laughs> bless the first of our hands lord he is tired and is early it is isn't days. early in the morning what are you talking about oh, well me. this isn't for me because i'm an early bird <laughs> hallelujah bless your holy name lord. Oh, I see the Lord seated upon the throne. It's 
daunted And the train of his road Fills the temple with
illuminate it to us, Lord. Father, anoint us. Let it dig deep into our hearts. Let it take root in us today. Lord, illuminate it to our hearts, Lord, to our spirits. In Jesus' name I pray, bless all the branches who have come out this morning. Yes, Lord. And those who will later on be listening to this, in Jesus' name I pray. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. 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 <laughs> it's a little dark. It's a dark day here in the north. It's a dark morning. It's morning. a dark morning. We're in his light. But that's not to say that this is the day of the Lord, which is full of darkness and clouds. I'm going to try to lighten this up a bit. Uh, well, that's a little better, isn't it? Huh? Sure. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> so where were we? Does anybody remember? We're starting in Job 5. There was a good discussion yesterday in the um, chat. Yes, there was. Mm -hmm. There was. Um, and of course, some topics that probably we should look into. Um, there was, I asked my wife because she has is very much experienced in, in, she was once involved in a ministry that had a lot to do with um, just, um, not discernment. Deliverance. Deliverance. Mm -hmm. um, and she years. is familiar, very uh, yeah. familiar, if you will, with familiar spirits and what they were about. She had oh, practical yes. experience. They so I asked her, they I counterfeit. Thought, given what we saw in the chat yesterday, I, I said, well, wh why don't you, do you have any kind of teachings on, you know, because we talked about um, ghosts. We were talking about ghosts and spirits and demons and and well, ghosts are spirits. Ghosts are spirits, but <laughs> um, and if you remember, Anne did a did a teaching on this um, a few weeks ago on demons and. and um, Has it only been a few weeks? It seems like months. It might be, it might even be a month ago. Hmm? I think Probably it's only a, a few weeks, but yeah. anyway, and I thought it would be great, and you know, we to follow up. Let's let's have a discussion about that. But she is not prepared. She didn't take any notes. Her, all her notes are up here, <laughs> and her experience. So. Hmm. And I, I think I did mention yesterday well, well, in our we, teaching, we should definitely it's something pray we and should think about talking yeah, pray about, and pray about and because it, maybe it have an open panel, maybe a Zoom, a yes, Zoom let's, morning. Let's invite a few familiar spirits in, and we can have like a no, 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 no. Don't talk with the demons. No, <laughs> they're full no. of lies. I'm being facetious. <laughs> so anyway, we're, we we uh, we just we finished chapter four of Job um, yesterday <coughs> and we're going to move into chapter five because why are we going to do that? Because Eliphaz is still talking. He's still responding to Job's woe is me diatribe in verse and chapter three of I curse the day that I was born that all this calamity should fall upon me. Mm -hmm. And of course, Eliphaz is now building a case as will his fellow friends be building a case. Um, as we pointed out that they're going to spend the next 30 or so chapters telling Job that he's wrong, that the reason all these things have fallen upon him is because he must have sinned and God is punishing him. You know, even, even that, uh, the thought just occurred to me, I suppose, I'd have to look that up, but I, I just, I just had this thought, does God punish sin in this life? Well, we definitely we suffer think. the consequences for it. The, the consequences, but the consequences usually follow upon an action that has preceded it, something mm -hmm. that's already happened, and that action would be mm -hmm. the judgment of God on sin. And He allows it. But is to God play its way is out. God waiting? 
because we know that God is not slack, as Peter says. God is not slack in his promises. He's just waiting for all men to come to repentance. The Bible sort of teaches that, that, that punishment for sin. Well, look, when you look in the Old Testament, what he, how he brought in the different nations to deal with Israel and their rebellion and their idolatry. That's true. Wouldn't that be like a punishment yeah, to them? Yeah, no, you're right. You're to right. kind of just I'm asking steer an them, open question here. I don't know, but yeah, yes. Steer them back on the track. I, you know? I would suggest to you, and when we were in the book of Jeremiah, of course, mm -hmm. that, that's a perfect example Definitely. of how God... He disciplines them. ...will discipline them. But again, is that was that discipline? That was There's a difference between discipline yeah. and punishment, though. Was that punishment for their sins, or are we trying to discipline? He was trying to get them to come back to where they were, and that's the case. You know, my understanding... Now he does I punish the nations, them, though. He punishes nations. He judges them. He's but, doing it now, actually. But God's going to deal... God has already de has provided the remedy for sin, and that's Christ Jesus and his work upon the cross. Mm -hmm. But he's not... I think the Bible kind of teaches that God will will judge sin at the end of days, the day of the Lord. But he also judges today. But anything that kind of looks like he's judging judging of sin, as you just pointed out, could be more he does he does correct us. He does he he does discipline it's, us. I think the, the heathen nations he definitely does judge them. Or well, he will and we be. see that now. Well yeah you know, he will be because here, he but. is judging the nations right now. He's judging the nations, but that judgment will not follow until, if we follow the book of Revelation, the Valley of Decision. Well, the ultimate judgment, yes. Um, mm -hmm. But that's what I'm saying. And he this judges his church. This ultimate judgment. Judgment begins, right? You know. Is is this where one of the errors of, of Job's friends is, I guess is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. They're saying, you're being judged for your sins right now, Job. Well, is he? Is he being judged for his sins? Well, we know that from chapters mm. 1 and 2. He's not being judged no. for his sin. But no. they don't know that. Mm -mm. And to them, on the outside, look at him, it looks like he's being judged for his sins. But is he really? And I guess uh, Heavens pointed this out in the chat yesterday. You know, when people are going through these things that, that, that it looks like it, uh, they're being punished or it looks like, you know, we're not in their shoes. They're, 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 they're going through a lot of trials and tribulations. We are not, we should, we need to have compassion. We need to have empathy for them. We need to pray for them. We can't judge them. And, and heavens, this is a, a perfect example that, that you bring mm -hmm. up. And this is great that, that Job's friends were judging without understanding or realizing or knowing exactly what was going on with Job. They're ju they just assumed they made an assumption, which we all do. At times, he made and, an assumption. And later on in 9.33, he, he's seeking a mediator. He says, you know, I need a mediator. Right. And, those, and there is none. <laughs> and, and chapter 9 is very important because this mm -hmm. is a prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ and yeah. about him being our advocate. And, right. you know, we will get our there. Our mediator between God and man. We will get there. The Job realizes, you know, even more yeah. than his friends. Yes, I'm sinful, and that's why I need a mediator between God mm -hmm. and I. And, I, and yeah. we'll get to that in chapter nine. Yes, that's we a good will. point. That's a really good yeah. point. But again, this is where I think Job's friends uh, are, are 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 not right, and and this is what God tells at the end of the book of Job. Well, so, I say that because of the verse one here. Yeah. That's, so let's read. Let's read. Let's go into now. Remember, Eliphaz. Is, is still speaking here. This is an unfortunate mm -hmm. chapter division because um, we sense that these are two different things. It's not. It's it's the same speech that he's making to Job that he did in in chapter four. And but now he's gonna he's he's sort of going to change direction a little bit here. And um, you know he's he he's saying. The first in chapter four, essentially, Job, you've sinned. Mm -hmm. you know, who can a mortal be more righteous than God? No, this then you've sinned, and then, but because you will not acknowledge this fact, because you will not repent, so to speak, although he doesn't use those words, because you do not mm -hmm. acknowledge that God is God, at least in Eliphaz's eyes, this is his argument. Job, you're being punished because you don't realize it. You don't acknowledge that God. Is, is is the God of all things? You think that you are above God, or at least equal with God? Yeah, I mean, that's the inference in all those arguments. 
Mm. And now he says, because of where you are standing right now, because of the way you think, and of course Job's not thinking this way, but Eliphaz thinks he's thinking Thinks he is, he's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's projecting he's, that on him. He says in, in chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Call out now, is there anyone who will answer you? And to which of the holy ones will you ch turn? For wrath kills a foolish man, and envy slays a simple one. I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his dwelling place. His sons are far from safety. They are crushed in the gate, and there is no deliverer, because the hungry eat up his harvest, taking it even from the thorns, and a snare snatches their substance. The affection for affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble spring from the ground. Yet man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. Okay, so we'll start there. As you can see, that's mm -hmm. what we're calling us, as sparks fly upward. Yeah. So, again, as Eliphaz is telling Job, because of, you know, your intransigence, intransigence, that's a hard word to say, because of your hardness mm -hmm. of heart against God that you will not yield you will not admit that God is right and you are wrong right who will you call on now who will mm -hmm. answer you you know to which of the holy ones will you turn of course holy ones always refer in the old testament to the angelic hosts um oh you were going to say something mm -hmm. yeah. um in other words what remedy will you now propose or presume upon Job because of your attitude. Because it's obvious to all of us, in your situation, us looking from the outside in, that you're being punished for your sins, that, that you must have done something wrong. And of course, as I said, throughout most of the chapters, they're going to try to tell him what he did wrong or guess, try to guess what he did wrong. Um, Based on their own experiences, probably. But... <laughs> but um, He's saying, call if you will, but who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Resentment right. kills a fool, and envy is a slave. They're simple. These next verses 2 to 7, do they not remind you of the book of Proverbs? M many of these, like for instance, um, envy slays the simple. Proverbs 12, 16 says, fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. Right? Um, and basically, this is what LFS is telling Joel, by cursing the day you were born because of the situation you find yourself in, you, because you're annoyed, because you're, 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 you're weighed down, because you know, the whole, it seems like the whole world's coming against you, you're showing your annoyance at God when the, when the fault is with you, not with God. He said, but the prudent overlook that insult. Well, again, this has nothing to do with that, but to actually what's happening. But again, this is why Job is, is, is lumped in with all the wisdom literature in the Bible, because there's a lot of, of overlap between all these books. We find a lot of these arguments and a lot of these, these observations that are going to be made in the book of Job, we find them in the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, he starts talking about, he starts equating Job with being the fool that we see in the book, in the Bible. What is, what is the one that we all remember in the book of Proverbs? The fool says in his heart, there is no God. There is no God. And basically when Eliphaz is calling Job a fool, he's saying, you're saying there is no God by your attitude, by your actions, by the words that you say, what we're hearing. You're saying there is no God. That that he and and if there is, he's an unrighteous God because he's treating you unfairly, unjustly. Mm. And Eliphaz is saying, We all know, we all see this. I myself, he says, have seen the fool taking root, and suddenly his house is cursed. You know, the idea there is someone who who has been following the paths of God and following the paths of righteousness and have been has put his faith and trust in Christ but all of a sudden 
for whatever reason, and usually it's the consequences or incidents or the things of the earth that's affecting him, the things that happen in his life, he suddenly veers off the road and falls into the ditch and falls away from God and foolishness takes root in his life and suddenly his house is cursed, whereas before it was blessed, when he was trusting in the Lord, now he doesn't trust in the Lord. Now he's questioning the Lord, his house is cursed. Eliphaz is saying to Job, you must have done that. You, up until some point, you trusted in the Lord. and But then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, Job, that we don't know about, but you you know, you know, should tell us what happened, or you should tell us where, where, you, where you went wrong. You went off the rails there, and now your house is cursed. His house has pretty well disappeared. His wealth has been destroyed. His family has been destroyed. It's only him and his wife. I'm looking in Jeremiah yeah. 12, 1 to 3. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me talk with you about your judgments. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? You have planted them, yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. But you, O oh Lord, know me. You have seen me, and you have tested my heart toward you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and prepare them for the way of slaughter. Hmm. It's almost the same. Jeremiah is saying the same thing as Eliphaz. I've seen the same thing. I've seen these people who proclaim to know God and have followed him all the way suddenly veer off the way. And now they're doing, they're, they're trying to do yeah. it in their own strength and their houses are cursed and, and they, they become, uh, they become the sheep ready mm. for the slaughter as Jeremiah says, but Jeremiah, as opposed to Eliphaz and, it, and, even if Eliphaz has heard Jeremiah say this, well, maybe it would have said the same thing to him because mm. Jeremiah says, but I have maintained mm. my faith and trust in you, God, that all things are in your hands and my life is a snare to you, is a prey to you. And whatever you do is righteous and right. Mm -hmm. and, and I accept that because I, I, I trust in you. Mm -hmm. And Job who's doing the same thing Eliphaz doesn't recognize that. So I can see Eliphaz probably saying the same thing to Jeremiah as he would have said to Job because mm -hmm. there's no understanding there. There's no wisdom here. There's just, there's a harshness. And I'd like to uh, quickly, before we move on, go back to one and two. Call, if you will, who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? When talking I read, about angels there, I think, too. They right? were talking about angels yeah, and angelicals, yeah. like we said. Yeah. But I don't know about you, but when I when I read those verses, I think about what Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter, I think it's 6, Hebrews chapter 6. It said, for those of who, you might want to look it up, because I, I, I think it's 6, Hebrews 6, 9. And this, this is a verse that we... Um, but beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. Hmm? No. Okay. The verse I'm thinking of, I'll have to look it up. The verse that I'm thinking of is this. That for those who have tasted the heavenly gift mm, right. and have walked in the ways of the Lord and oh, yet turn away mm -hmm. again. And we've used this verse against those who think once saved, always saved. Right. And turn away from the ways of, of, of life that Christ has showed us. Then it says there is no more... There, there is no other way of for the remission of their right. sins. Right, so is it impossible for those who were once enlightened okay. yes. and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God Amen. and yeah. the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucified again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. 
Amen. Okay, what was that again? That's those are Hebrews verses. six, verse four to six. To six. Mm -hmm. We can almost hear an echo of that in this. Call if you will, but who will answer you? To which of the holy ones we return? You once trusted in God, but now you don't trust Him anywhere. There, there, there's nothing left to be done for you. Mm -hmm. That's what the book of Hebrews is saying. Scary verse, frightening verse. Mm. That's essentially what Eliphaz is saying here. Because you turned your back on God because he's punished you and you're not receiving the correction, you're not receiving. There's not much more we can do for you, Job, unless you you repent, admit your sin before God and allow him to cleanse you. Um, and But then he goes on, but because you won't, you are the fool. You are the fool that he starts mm -hmm. talking about, you know. And he said, I've seen the fool taking root. And suddenly his house was cursed. Same thing just happened to you, Job. And it, and we know it was foolish people that happened to before. So you must be proving yourself to be a fool. He's saying, your trouble just didn't come out of anywhere. It sprung up from the ground. That's right. His <laughs> children are far from safety. What happened to Job's children? They were all killed. Mm-hmm. The hungry consume his harvest. Remember the Sabaeans? I think it was the Sabaeans came in in camels and they just ravaged his fields and destroyed his caravans. All these things that happened to Job, he's pointing out, even amongst the, thir th the thirsty part as well. And that's where Anne says, and he says, all these things happen to you. They don't, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's a reason, you know, in nature, we understand that in physics for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It, it's the law of consequences, as Anne says. You know, for hardship does not spring from the soil. This didn't come from anywhere, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. Yeah. Right? Man yeah. is born to trouble. Why would Eliphaz say that? Because we were born to trouble the minute mm -hmm. that Adam and Eve ate that forbidden fruit. The curse came upon us. We are born to trouble. And it's inevitable. And I love the metaphor, which is why I'm using it here. This metaphor of, of God and how God hates sin and God will punish sin, even if we think he won't. And there's a lot of indications, you know, where people, people think that God doesn't see them or God's not acting. Therefore, God isn't holding them. That's not true. We know what the Bible teaches about that. But I love this. It's inevitable as surely as sparks fly upwards. Sparks aren't, don't exist by themselves. They're not, they're, not a, they're not a separate entity. Where do sparks come from? They come from a fire, mm -hmm. right? They're part, they're evidence. They fly off from the fire. Whatever's happening to the fire, the sparks fly off. It's inevitable. They see it in, that, in, in the natural world whenever they had a fire mm -hmm. at night. You know, we all know that, how beautiful it is at, at, when we have these campfires at night and the sparks fly off and there's like these little stars in the, in, in the night sky. They're inevitable. You don't have a fire. You don't have a fire without those sparks, and this is what Eliphaz is saying. You what know, about what about? It may refer to the Ugaritic God. The what? Ugaritic God. Is that what you're of the underworld? Terrorism? Yeah, of the underworld, who was supposedly responsible for plagues and lightning. It's in mythology. Maybe. I, I mean. But if we take that, if we take what the commentator said there, it's part of, it, it, certainly part I of reference, it. Was, and and Ugarat yeah. is a very ancient city. We Ugarat, acknowledge yeah. that this is the oldest. Oh, and by the way, Chantel, I'm going to look that up. She said she had heard that the book of Job was antediluvian and before Noah's flood. I heard flood. that too. We'll look that up for you. Yeah. And just, yeah. You know, because it is acknowledged that this is the, one oldest, of the oldest book. Yeah. Not one of, it is the oldest book in the Bible, this one. And so Ugarat. And Ugari, Ugarit, is an ancient, ancient city in Syria. Well, it says a reference like this to mythology does not imply or endorse a belief in other gods. Eliphaz is saying, just as a plague springs up from the demonic forces of hell, so does trouble come from person's nature. I would agree with that, but I would think that hmm. back in that time, that seems like a very sophisticated theology and understanding for, for essentially desert people, people, well, yeah. people that, that lived, you know, their hmm. idea of gods were on a very simple level. 
you know, you 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 gave you sacrifice to the gods so that you you could have a rich harvest, uh, and so you could feed your family and you would stay alive and you would have good weather and they would it was all basic needs that stuff back then, mm. um, or fight your enemies. I mean, mm. it could be, but I then the question that I would ask if if Eliphaz is referring back to this deity that, mm -hmm. from ancient Syria. They, they did worship him. Kind of, yeah, it kind of is like, all right, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is just one of many gods in his own pantheon. He's he's a he, he's, mm -hmm. he worships many gods as well as this God. Um, mm -hmm. And Job would be aware of that. If he's making this reference, he would be aware of that. But to me, it's it's more a very simple thing you know they've they've seen in everyday life that men have trouble yep and i mean that's that is basically i i think a basic i was gonna say need but <clears throat> very early on in man in, in the existence of man we understand that now because of what happened in the garden but they're trying to explain even today we do the same thing we try to explain why people get into trouble why people? What is the root of it? Right. What is the root of it? Right. What causes what, people to what do what they do? It? What causes it's it? You know? And and you know it's funny because or or it's or it's it's, it's very um, true what Eliphaz is saying here because first of all he says mm -hmm. the trouble comes out of the human heart. You know you're a fool. You make a decision. You know you do these things and this would happen. But it also comes from. He, he, he's almost, he says also, it, it comes from the supernatural as well. If, he, if he's actually referring back to this God, then he's close to what's actually <laughs> happening here between, you know, this, again, celestial chess match that Satan and, and God are, are, are in the midst of um, to demonstrate and prove the righteousness of God in human beings. Um, so he's kind of on the right track, but he's the wrong God sort of <laughs> idea, you know, that trouble comes from, from both ends and both from ourselves, the works of our own hands. And also in some people, and I'm not saying every, but I would think that most believers, because the Bible does teach that Satan is, is accusing us night and day, the accuser of the brethren. So, you know, he's doing the same thing with us as believers in Christ as he did with Job. Um, oh yes and many along the way <laughs> so anyway so we yep. go to verse 8 mm -hmm. 8 to 16 but as for me i would seek god and to god i would commit my cause who does great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number he gives rain on the earth and sends waters on the fields he sets on high those who are lowly and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the, the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. He catches the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the cunning comes quickly upon them. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope at noontime as in the night, but he saves the needy from the sword, from the mouth of the mighty, and from their hand so the poor have hope, and injustice shuts her mouth. Okay, so mm. some in, some important things here. So uh, Eliphaz finishes telling Job what he thinks is the problem with him. Yeah. The problem is him. Mm -hmm. And now he, he, after explaining what he sees and how he understands it, he now gives uh, Job his first piece of advice and what is that verse 8 huh? but as for me i would seek god and to god i would commit my cause i would commit my cause now if it were me if it I, were me job, that's this what, is I what i'd would be do. doing now as if job hadn't is this good advice or doesn't well mm -hmm. is this good advice well of course it is it's it's wonderful advice and it's something that we own. But he's assuming do. that Job didn't. Exactly. A lot of this, this whole thing with his friends is an assumption. Right. You know, all their arguments come from an assumption. Mm -hmm. It's what they observe with their eyes. It's what, they, what they're observing with their natural senses. Rather than, you know, 
I would tell Eliphaz here, well, you know what? Maybe you should take your own advice. Maybe you should seek God and ask, why is Job being punished here? Instead of assuming it's all Job's doing, mm -hmm. you know, for the, for, for the most part, there's truth in that, but there's also underlying issues. Again, as I say, you know, some of the things that to the purposes of God that we do not understand. Remember the, the ways of God are higher than our ways and his thoughts are mm -hmm. higher than our thoughts. You know, what, what we see as unfairness, he sees as, as justice. Mm -hmm. you know, it's almost the opposite thing of what he sees. And, and then he goes on to declare, and, and this is declared throughout the scriptures about the greatness of God, the wonder of God. And this is going to be a theme that goes all the way. And even Job will be talking about the wonders of God in the physical universe. The things that we can see and the things we can feel. He performs yes. wonders that cannot be fathomed. Again, there's, an, there's a, a recognition. Yeah, there's a recognition <laughs> that he does mm. things that we can not only see, but things we can't see. Miracles that cannot be counted. He understands that. He acknowledges that. Mm -hmm. You know, life is a miracle. This whole existence is a miracle. The, the fact that we breathe another breath in our lives and we're not struck dead by God is a miracle. All these things. Yeah. But then he, he, he goes and, and he points to the things that they know about, the thing, the yes, observable universe that they can see and feel. He provides rain for the earth and sends water on the countryside. The, this whole theory or this whole um, law of what they call hydrology of how clouds and rain works is actually right. found in the book of Job. Mm -hmm. It is. Science is actually proved throughout the, the, the Old Testament. The scriptures. The yes. scriptures. Now, and the other thing he says, the lowly he sets on high, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He thwarts the plans of the crafty so that their hands achieve no success. He snatches mm -hmm. the wise in their craftiness, and the schemes of the wily are swept away. Darkness comes upon them in the daytime, and at noon they grope at night. He saves the needy from the sword in their mouth and saves them from the clutches of the powerful so the poor have hope and well, injustice shuts its mouth. Isn't that like a judgment? He's judging here? God is judging the unrighteous? He's, he's trying to correct them. I, I think you can make an equal argument for that. I, I don't think this is just... Them, because what is... What, what, how do we understand the judgment of sin in the Bible? What, mm -hmm. what is the consequences when God judges sin? What does it lead to? Uh, it leads to death and more, more. I think there's depth. Intently, to it, it leads to the second death. Yeah, I think there's a depth to. Yes, the there's, there's, you know, God, mm -hmm. God, <clears throat> and the Bible is a perfect. God can set a judgment, but he can pronounce a judgment. But as far as the fulfillment of that judgment, he can leave it to the future. Mm -hmm. He can do that. So that's yeah. what this is. Uh, I think whenever we read this, it isn't, he, he, I, I don't think he's, he's judging them. Yes, he's judging their actions, but it's nothing that repentance in Jesus Christ cannot fix for, mm -hmm. for all of us, for them, Amen. for them. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the book, that's why Job, or, and I mentioned this before, and I will continue to mention it as we go through the book of Job, God, spoiler alert, God asked Job to pray for his friends, to pray mm -hmm. for their repentance, to pray That's for right. their wisdom and knowledge, because he loves them too. Yes, he does. He wants them to understand. He, he wants, wants them to understand to do the, the, same. the things yeah. that they said were wrong about him and the things that Job said were right about him. Um, but anyway, we're not we're not there yet. But this these verses, do you know what they remind me of? Can you go to uh, Matthew chapter 1. I'll show King. Lickety split. Bah, the trick. Okay. I'll keep going. I'll keep going back. You two. Okay. And then one. All right. All right. So you're on one. Um, okay, maybe I'm, 
Okay, I'm thinking Luke. Try Luke 2. Sorry, Branches. Luke 2. She loved the rustling of the rice paper. <laughs> I know my wife does. <laughs> okay, Luke 2. Um... Luke chapter 1. Um, this reminds me of the visit of Gabriel to the Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. who, pronounces, who announces to her that she has become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and she will bear the Messiah. And this is how she responds. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I do not know a man. No, sorry. Then she goes and visits Mary. Or her. her <laughs> it's not Christmas, so I'm trying to remember. <laughs> she goes and visits Elizabeth, who's pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary visits Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. This is what I want to read. We're going to. <laughs> when I read these passages that Eliphaz just said, that what comes springs to mind here is the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. Okay. Okay. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him. For generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. Okay, hold on. His, what did you just say? Um, Behold, henceforth, all generations Washington. will call me blessed. Um, For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. And his mercy on those who fear him. Yes. This is exactly what Eliphaz is saying here. He saves it. Keep, no, you're going to keep reading. He saves the needy from the sword in their mouth, and he saves them from the clutches of the powerful. Okay? This is exactly what Mary is mm. saying here. Keep reading. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. Okay. The lowly he sets on high. This is Eliphaz. The lowly he sets on high and those who mourn are lifted to safety. Mm -hmm. He thwarts the plans of the crafty and so that their hands achieve no success. He catches the wise in their craftiness and the schemes of the wily are swept away. Doesn't this sound exactly what Eliphaz says? What Mary is saying is, is, echoed, it, it, it is an echo of what Eliphaz was saying here. Keep reading. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. So Eliphaz says, so the poor have hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, the poor have hope and injustice, injustice shuts, shuts her it mouth. We hear this echoed in Mary's song. And uh, what Eliphaz is saying here is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Is absolutely true. And this is where, this is almost, this is almost the gospel here, right? Of going out and, 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 and it's a reflection of Christ's ministry. How, and he told the Pharisees this. He says, you know, he said, because of your pride, because you think yourselves righteous, you're blind. Because if you were blind, then you would not right. and could not see, then you would then you would not be righteous, you would not be held accountable. Because you say that we see, we see your yeah. sin remains and you will be judged for it. 
He also said that because of that, because of your sin and because of where you think that you are, your relationship with God, the whores, prostitutes, the lowly, the tax collectors, the, the downtrodden, those who have occupied the lowest part in the society are coming into the kingdom of mm -hmm. God before you. First Samuel 2, 8 says, He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. Amen. Amen. Again, mm -hmm. that there in the time of David, that same idea yeah. of the raising of the lowly. That's what the gospel from is. From the ash heap. Blessed. And where was Job sitting? In ashes. That's right. <laughs> I mean, from the ashes. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. There's there's a perfect metaphor. There's a perfect example. A visual example of a sinner. Uh, uh, of sitting in the ashes. And how God will raise him up. Yeah. Even when he's being accused of all these things that he didn't do. God will eventually raise him up. And bless him twice as much as he blessed him before. Because... Job trusted in God. Amen. Amen. And uh, the other thing, what was I going to say there? No clue. About the, about the kingdom of um, and this this idea of raising the lowly. It again, I'm mm. glad re Anne read that because that's all the way through the scriptures. This this is a core doctrine of the gospel. Well, I know what I was going to say. I know what I was going to say. Matthew 5, verse 1. Well, it could be verse 2, because I think verse 1 is Jesus. No, because verse 1 is where Jesus gathered his disciples on the mountainside, and mm. he began to speak. Verse 2, blessed are the poor in spirit. When you should probably For they know. shall see God. What Eliphaz is talking about here, and, and he may not realize it, but what he's, he, he's talking about the physical needs, the, the the physical needs of the Lord, how we are to feed and clothe the Lord. And, and we know that from Matthew 25 and what will happen if we don't. Because if we don't, we if we don't do it to the lowest of these, then we don't do it for the Lord. We don't do it for him. Um, so blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay. Jesus introduces... Something that, that was probably understood by David, but now becomes part and parcel of this um, constitution of the kingdom, so if, if you will, which is what the Beatitudes are. Um, he's saying, not only yeah. are we to look after the poor in body, but blessed are you if you're poor in spirit. That has nothing to do whether you're rich or poor on the outside. But if you feel, blessed are you when you realize your need for God to uh, the, the salvation of the Lord because you are you are poor your soul is lacking and you recognize that it's lacking that's a cause of a lot, a lot of people who are searching and eventually find the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ because they have that sense they, they may not be able to articulate it that way they may not be able to, to say it and explain it that way but they have this longing in their soul this emptiness in their soul where mm -hmm. They know that they're poor. They know that they're missing something, and, and they seek, and, and they find. And Jesus said, if you seek me, you will find. You will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Right? And mm -hmm. although Eliphaz is saying these things right now, it's not really with any kind of understanding. But again, we all understand that God can make a donkey talk. And if he can make an ass speak, he can make men speak the truth mm -hmm. even if it means nothing to them mm -hmm. you know or, or they're speaking incorrectly or with well, the lack of understanding or wisdom those that hear and that's what jesus says those that have ears let them hear a lot of people heard what jesus said on those mountainsides but very few people took it to heart very few people understood they heard the but they didn't have ears to hear exactly. there's a difference right exactly Exactly. So we, understanding. you might say the same thing about Eliphaz and his friends. You mm -hmm. know, they heard, but they didn't have the ears to hear. They, they said what they thought was right, and it sounded right to their ears. It sounded pious. It sounded, and they did speak a lot of truth, as, as we've seen. Yeah. But where are you going? Getting ready to do the last song. Oh, she's going to do a last song. 
yes, yeah, so we're going to leave it there for today. Um, this is this is interesting. We, well, I wasn't sure where we were going with this. Um, I just felt that the Holy Spirit, um, Anne and I were kind of wondering where we were going. We we're praying about where to go next. Uh, and um, we was reading in Job, and there's a lot there to to unpack. There's a lot there that, that God is trying to tell us to. It's, an, it's, it's really important. It's a lot of deep spiritual truth in the book of Job. A lot. And it goes back and forth into the New Testament thing. The wisdom of, of Jesus of Nazareth when he spoke on the earth, a lot of it came out of uh, a lot of it came out of um, Oh, Zachariah's song, Mary's song, okay. Um, a lot of it came out of the book of, of Job. How we, how we understand our relationship with God. Just want to find those verses for the Magnificat. And uh, I thought maybe, you know, as we went along there, starting in Job 4, and uh, I really sense that the Lord is opening up our understanding to some of these things, uh, to a lot of these things. And and so um, it's going to be an on again, off again. We may do one week of Job and then we'll go on to move something else. But we're going to come back to the book of Job because I think it's really important for us to go through this. There, there are some deep, deep spiritual truths that, that we really need to plumb. And it will benefit us and help us in our walk with the Lord. So, Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for which your word, Lord God, especially for this book of Job, Lord, that, that the more we, we peel back, the more layers we kind of uncover, the deeper it goes, Lord, the deeper our understanding. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are leading and guiding us, Father, in this teaching, teaching us these great truths about God, but also these great truths about ourselves, Lord, and these warnings. These things that we are to be aware of, Lord, when we walk. It is why the Lord Jesus said we must strive to stay on the narrow way. It's difficult to stay on the narrow way. But with his wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit, he gives us our, his power that we are able to do these things. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for today, Lord. I thank you for all the branches who joined us today and everyone who will be watching this. I pray, Lord, that you will provide for every need. Lord, you will bless them and they're going in and they're coming out, Father God. And you will keep them and protect them, Lord, until we meet again, Father. We thank you, O Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.
Rose, amen. We'll have a blessed day and stay blessed. Stay blessed. And remember to stay in the vine, because without him branches, we can do, do nothing. Pray you'll have a great day. Remember, tomorrow is Living Stones. And tonight's the worship. Three o'clock. No, that was last Wait, night. Wait, that was last night. I said that last week too, didn't mm -hmm. I? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Can't and, repeat. And don't forget to join us for Sunday night communion. Always a blessing. Amen. And I will be talking about heaven. Mm. All heaven declares. All heaven declares. Amen. Bye-bye. Love you. See you then, bride. Bride. <laughs> Yeah, bride. They are the bride of Christ. They are Christ. the bride of Christ. But they are branches too. Fruitful <laughs> branches. Bye. <laughs>